Deep within a sprawling forest, bathed in the dappled hues of sunlight filtering through the dense canopy, stood a magnificent banyan tree. Its massive trunk, gnarled and ancient, spoke of centuries gone by. Its aerial roots, like mystical curtains, draped down to the forest floor, creating a hidden world beneath its emerald embrace. This banyan tree was more than just a tree, it was the heart of the forest. It was a life giver, a shelter, a silent observer to the intricate dance of life playing out in its shade. The air hummed with the symphony of the forest. Insects buzzed, birds chirped, and leaves rustled in the gentle breeze. The scent of damp earth and blooming flowers filled the air, a heady perfume that spoke of life and decay, of growth and renewal. The forest floor, a mosaic of fallen leaves and dappled sunlight, teemed with unseen creatures, each playing their part in the intricate web of life. The banyan tree, at the heart of it all, stood as a testament to the enduring power of nature. Life around the banyan tree was a delicate balance, a harmonious coexistence of predator and prey, each dependent on the other. The banyan tree provided shelter and sustenance to a myriad of creatures, from the tiniest insects to the largest birds. It was a microcosm of the forest itself, a testament to the interconnectedness of all living things. And within this vibrant tapestry of life, a cunning plan was about to unfold. The banyan tree with its massive trunk and sprawling branches had witnessed countless seasons come and go. It had seen the cycle of life and death play out countless times, the rise and fall of countless creatures. It was a silent observer, a wise old sage, privy to the secrets whispered on the wind. The stage was set, the players in place, for a tale of cunning and deceit, of unforeseen consequences and hard-won lessons. Among the banyan tree's regular visitors were a flock of elegant cranes. With their sleek white feathers and sharp beaks, they were a graceful sight as they stalked the forest floor in search of food. They feasted on insects, their sharp beaks darting in and out of the undergrowth with precision. The cranes were a vital part of the forest ecosystem, their presence ensuring a balance among its many inhabitants. Another denizen of the banyan tree was a stealthy cobra. Its scales, gleaming like polished jewels in the dappled sunlight, hid a deadly secret. The cobra was a patient hunter, its cold eyes constantly scanning for unsuspecting prey. It lay coiled among the banyan's roots, waiting for the opportune moment to strike. Its presence instilled fear in the hearts of many forest creatures, a reminder of the ever-present danger lurking in the shadows. And then there was the crab, a cunning creature with a hard exoskeleton and a pair of powerful claws. The crab lived in a burrow at the base of the banyan tree, its life a constant struggle for survival. Unlike the cranes with their sharp beaks and the cobra with its deadly venom, the crab had no natural weapons to defend itself. It was constantly at risk from predators, its life hanging by a thread. This vulnerability had made the crab resourceful, its mind constantly devising ways to outsmart its enemies. The crab, despite its small size, was known for its intelligence. It observed the comings and goings of the forest creatures, learning their habits and weaknesses. It knew the cranes were a threat, their sharp beaks capable of cracking its shell with ease. It also knew the cobra was a danger, its venom a swift and silent killer. The crab, driven by a need to survive, began to formulate a plan, a plan as cunning as it was dangerous. The crab, in its desperation to survive, devised a plan to turn its enemies against each other. It knew the cranes and the cobra were natural enemies, their paths often crossing in the fight for survival. The crab decided to exploit this rivalry to its advantage, to create a scenario where its enemies would eliminate each other, leaving it safe and sound. The crab's plan was simple yet cunning. It involved spreading rumors, planting seeds of doubt and mistrust between the cranes and the cobra. The crab, with its sideways scuttle and beady eyes, was adept at going unnoticed. It began by leaving trails of feathers near the cobra's lair, creating the impression that the cranes were encroaching on the cobra's territory. Then, it started leaving half-eaten rodents near the cranes' usual feeding grounds, making it seem like the cobra was responsible for stealing their prey. The crab, a master of deception, made sure to time its actions carefully. It would wait until the cranes were away foraging for food before planting the feathers near the cobra's lair. Similarly, it would wait for the cobra to retreat into its hole before leaving the rodent carcasses near the cranes. The crab knew that suspicion, once planted, could grow into full-blown animosity, especially between natural enemies. The forest, 
usually alive with the sounds of birdsong and rustling leaves, seemed to hold its breath. The tension was palpable, a silent storm brewing in the heart of the banyan tree's domain. The crab, pleased with its handiwork, retreated into its burrow, waiting for its plan to unfold. It believed it had found a way to ensure its survival, unaware of the chaos it was about to unleash. The crab's plan worked better than it had anticipated. The cranes, upon finding the rodent carcasses, were enraged. They believed the cobra was deliberately stealing their food, disrupting the delicate balance of the forest. The cobra, on the other hand, was furious upon discovering the crane feathers near its lair. It saw this as a direct challenge, an act of aggression from the birds it considered a threat. The once peaceful coexistence between the cranes and the cobra crumbled. The forest, once a symphony of harmonious sounds, was now filled with the sounds of conflict. The cranes, their sharp beaks bared in anger, circled the banyan tree, their calls a chorus of fury. The cobra, its hood flared in warning, hissed menacingly from its hiding place among the roots, its scales gleaming menacingly. The other inhabitants of the forest, sensing the growing tension, retreated deeper into the undergrowth. The playful chatter of monkeys ceased, the chirping of crickets faded and even the rustling of leaves seemed to quiet down, as if the forest itself was holding its breath. The crab's web of deceit had ensnared everyone, turning the once peaceful ecosystem into a battleground. The conflict escalated quickly, turning from suspicion to aggression. The cranes, driven by their hunger and fueled by the crab's deceptive tactics, began dive-bombing the cobra's lair. The cobra, feeling threatened and cornered, retaliated with venomous strikes. The forest floor, once a place of life and growth, became a stage for a deadly dance between predator and prey, both manipulated by the cunning crab. The crab, initially pleased with the success of its plan, watched in horror as the situation spiraled out of control. The fight between the cranes and the cobra was much more violent than it had anticipated. The forest, once teeming with life, was now filled with fear and silence. The other creatures caught in the crossfire were forced to flee their homes, their lives thrown into disarray. The once vibrant ecosystem began to unravel. The insects, no longer hunted by the cranes, multiplied unchecked, decimating the forest's vegetation. The plants, deprived of the essential nutrients usually provided by the decaying matter of fallen leaves and fruits, started to wither. The delicate balance of the forest, maintained for centuries through a delicate dance of interdependence, was shattered. The crab, realizing the devastation it had caused, felt a pang of remorse. Its plan, conceived in desperation, had backfired horribly. It had sought to protect itself, but in doing so, it had inadvertently destroyed the very environment it depended upon for survival. The silence of the forest, once a comfort, now echoed the consequences of its actions. The banyan tree, a silent witness to the unfolding tragedy, stood tall amidst the devastation. It had seen countless seasons of change, had weathered storms and droughts, and had always emerged stronger. But the current crisis, a crisis of its own making, was different. This time the forest was not healing, it was dying. The banyan tree, the heart of the forest, could only watch helplessly as its world crumbled around it. The crab story is a stark reminder of the interconnectedness of all living things. It highlights the importance of considering the wider implications of our actions, however small or insignificant they may seem. The crab, in its quest for self-preservation, failed to foresee the devastating consequences of its deceit. Its actions, driven by fear and desperation, ultimately led to the destruction of its own habitat. The tale of the cunning crab is a fable for our times. In a world grappling with the consequences of climate change and environmental degradation, it serves as a timely reminder of the interconnectedness of all living things. We are all part of a delicate web of life, our actions impacting not just ourselves but also the world around us. As we navigate the complexities of the 21st century, let us remember the lesson of the cunning crab. Let us strive to be mindful of our actions, to consider the ripple effect they may have on the world around us. Let us choose cooperation over conflict, understanding over ignorance, and compassion over indifference. The future of our planet, much like the fate of the forest in our story, depends on it. Take a moment to reflect on the story of the cunning crab. How often do we act out of self-interest without considering the wider consequences? How can we, like the wise old banyan tree, 
be a force for good in our own spheres of influence. The answers to these questions and the actions we take in response will determine the fate of our planet. Please like and subscribe for more.